Wow. All right. Looks like we're recording. So let me go ahead and get started. Let me get this moving. See so view presentation view. All right. So let me go ahead and go to the next screen. So what are we going to talk about today? You know, and that's where to get material and training for Delphix. I'm going to talk about the review of the managed services. Pretty much every one of my tech talks is going to be about that managed services. And then, of course, uh, enterprise level deployment timeline, again, Delphix, but it can also be any type of um, adoption. So, um, detailed discussion of the pilot system setup time frame. So I actually will take a look at our um, project plan, something you might be looking at. The system rollout and expectations, and then operational rollout and expectations. So the system rollout expectations is going to go about some of the Delphix related prerequisites, and the operational rollout discussion is things to think about when you're working with a Delphix customer. That as you're providing services, is you know, don't forget these are new roles within Delphix that we need to define. And your project team needs to define and operationalize you know, things of that nature. That's where I'll be taking you today. So again, partner portal, this information will be available. Partnerfirst.delphix.com. All of our partners um, have access. You might have to self-register if you if for the first time. But tons of different information out there. Um, the Delphix org charts, the partner playbooks, dashboards for, for those of you who um, register deals for us. And then the training portal is access, single sign-on training portal once you're in the partner first, uh, Delphix.com. I've also been able to create specific playbooks for the partners themselves. So for instance, you know, if you have a campaign and you're working with Delphix and you have some special interest focus, there'll be a partner portal or playbook that I create that'll indicate your partner name, who's, who to contact, what's in it for you, and it's only visible to uh, the people of your organization. <clears throat> the training, training program. Don't forget for those of you who need additional training services, White Belt's kind of interesting uh, for virtualization. And it actually takes you through step-by-step -step some of the, the Delphix um, screens. So for those who haven't gone through it, um, this step-by-step -step how to launch in AWS, you have a speaker in the background, and then each screen and each entry is explained and provided for you. Launching in VMware, how to set up that VMware, how to get those um, VMDK set up, and all those different things. It's the same as Azure. So if you haven't gone there in the services um, portal, or if you haven't been registered in the services for masking or white belt, just go ahead and let me know, and I'll get you registered in there. So let's get started then with the managed services. <clears throat> the last time I was uh, had a tech talk, I kind of briefly went over this, and each time I'll go over this component. And that is, we're going to talk about the baseline deployment. And we're going to talk about the components that you expect to have deployed after that baseline. And that baseline is going to depend on what the Delphic salespeople actually, um, what they actually closed in the deal. So all this has been discussed. Reach out to the, the pre-sales engineers. Reach out to the account managers. If it's your team that's actually selling the product, this information should already be defined on what is actually going to be deployed this first time around. And then, of course, uh, you're going to be working with requirements owners and business authorities for signature authority. But what you're seeing on this screen, again, put anything in there, Delphix, put Salesforce, put you know, any kind of cloud migration adoption, anything that an enterprise is going to be reviewing, is going to go through these processes in one step or another. Now, I show you the baseline where it shows first to deploy. It could be called a pilot. It could be called you know, a test. It could be POC, whatever the organization calls it. But it, ideally, software's been purchased and they're ready to get it installed on their hardware and in their or their infrastructure. You're going to have a pro, uh, so the business ops team, they're the first ones out because it's going to be based on their business operations. You know, usually it's you know, on a not to interfere basis with their production operations. So you have to squeeze in, <clears throat> change controls and all those things that happen with a, with a deployment. There's going to be a program management aspect resource management, who's going to help you, and who's going to help the organization <clears throat> install this. It might be a consultant situation. If you're a system integrator or you're needing consulting dollars or need, you have a statement of work out there, it might be your resource management 
but we're also talking about the hardware resources. We have to identify where those are coming from. So this whole program management are people you need to be discussing with in the organization. <clears throat> if we're going to deploy a new system such as Delphix, and where am I going to find my resources? Have those discussions, have those hour meetings, those Zoom meetings prior. It's a lot of the planning sessions. Who from security and compliance is going to want to scan the software? Who's going to want to make sure that the users are adequately defined and meet the requirements of the password complexities and all those types of things? And then, of course, there's more to it in the light blue and then this greenish blue. But that's going to be for another meeting as we discuss those probably next Tech Talk on what you're going to be looking for for those. And then today's discussion, really, that initial deployment, there's going to be a lot of unknowns for that customer. They're going to be it, as much documentation as we can put out there for the customer and the discussions we can have when they actually sit down in front of that computer. You sit down in front of that computer with them to install Delphix. They're going to say, oh, I, didn't, I wasn't aware. I wasn't this. I wasn't that. And so have that most of that information, which I'm going to show you today, available for them to explain to them. Because there are going to be some ports, network ports, that need to be exposed that might not be, and they might have a whole change control process that needs to open those ports and all the questions that go with it. And then the security has to sign off. There's a lot going on. So be prepared when you go there. This information is all available in that partner portal. I have it defined as port architecture. I have it for infrastructure architecture. If you haven't gone in there, just go ahead and take a look at that. But it's all there to help you build that plan as you present to your potential customers. Theory of operations, I talked a little bit about that in my last um, conversation, but again, theory of operations. Understand and communicate to your customers that things are gonna change with Delphix. Right? Things will be different. Um, just the request for a database whether it's a virtual database or whether it is a you know physical database things that before Delphix came around there was no concern they just knew what the dba team knew what they had to do to stand up a database the um, development team knew what they had to do to get a new copy of a production database theory of operations this whole point of Delphix is to change that to digitize that and change that flow that data flow that data ops flow and that's what this is about the whole masking piece itself um, which is a different conversation altogether, but there's a full masking. If you're providing a masking solution for an organization, there's tons and tons of information that has to be changed. And even more so if they're using an existing masking system to integrate or find a way to back out that existing system to introduce the Delphix system. And then the backup and recovery of the Delphix engine. These things in the darker blue for the first time, first to deploy, these of all should be considered or if not defined during that process. In order for you to say, yeah, we have a good deployment, the first engine's in, the second engine, these applications are onboarded. At minimum, you should have that baseline system set up. Right? And then you, you help them move forward into that full enterprise. Will you help them move to the next one, which would be defining any kind of integrations, you know, especially automated in integrations policies and procedures, those types of things um, with the program management. Do you have to redefine policies and procedures in terms of maybe the masking, right? The masking itself, especially if an organization's not running masking today and you're introducing that masking, security in the, in the compliance department, they're gonna want policies and procedures around that masking. When does it get masked? How does it get communicated? And this needs to be defined and published. For especially those large tier one type organizations. They've already got a whole policies and procedures. They have documentalists that are making sure this is occurring so that anybody can go through and say, what is our policy on masking? You know, they're not gonna go to the DBA team or the team that's doing it. They're gonna go to the uh, compliance department and say, what's your policy on this? And then that's gonna have to be defined. So keep that in mind, especially if you're doing masking. You're not gonna force it down their throat, of course, but you're gonna ask them, is there policies and procedures that we should be working on with you to help you get this into your compliance department? Those are just simple questions. And if they say, oh yeah, yeah, we have that, but let's work on that next you know, day two, that's fine. But as a service provider, please keep that into consideration that that's gonna be involved. And even in the Dell 6 itself, what's the policy and procedure around replication or even access, who gets access to the virtualization engine. Those are all part of policies and procedures. And of course, project maintenance, that's a no brainer. Um, who's handling the project maintenance? Make sure you're in the program um, management office. 
especially if you're leading the project for the company, you know this, but this is just, um, this is how I keep things moving and it's my checklist as I deploy an enterprise. You know, I wanna make sure I talk to everybody, take little annotation notes, keep it in a spreadsheet, however you do this, but um, ensure your project maintenance is approved by the PMO because you can get overstepped. So if you're not in there, you're not understanding when those projects are sourced, when the projects are budgeted, you can run into some, some problems when you say, oh yeah, we don't have that in our PMO office for next year. You know, this is about, you know, getting your services out there, getting them adopting this process or any process, just make sure that you say, hey, we still have some outstanding things in this virtualization masking process we need to ensure. And, and then you have, of course, next step is you're gonna expand this Delphix engine, right? Expanding it, keeping it going. You're gonna have a new line of business. How do you great, how do you get awareness out to the entire organization? We've seen this over and over again. Uh, we have Delphix deploy in a small little corner. And then the question is, well, other companies, other parts of the department don't even know this exists. You know, so keep in mind that you know you and one out said this is great, this worked well. How do we communicate it throughout your organization? Because Delphix, even masking any of these products, they work better and they get return on their investment more if the entire organization adopts. Right? And then of course services, um, you know, gives you a chance during that baseline deployment to have conversations about who would be next and how can we deploy this in such a manner that. It's easily to adopt, easy to adopt throughout the organization, as well as putting the in place at the enterprise level. For instance, like I spoke about last time, the configuration management database, the, the ITIL process, how do you request a new system? Communicate, you know, have these awareness deployments. Hey, we have a, a new way of deploying databases. Um, if you want to have a you know, presentation, we can give you a presentation or, you know, but at least they know that when you actually request a new database, they're gonna see something different. You're gonna to have to indicate whether it's virtual or physical or if you'd like to be on board. Project team, project maintenance, when you're talking to the PMO office, let them be aware that, hey, Delphix can do these different types of things. When you run into a project, especially any kind of project that involves data movement, to so consider Delphix because this is gonna improve your project timeline. And that's, a note, and that's for sure, I, I can say that is, you know, the fact that you can rehearse and, and redo these and refresh these databases is really going to speed up that project, whatever project it might be. So this is kind of what I'm trying to um, communicate with managed services for everybody. Again, this process, I'm not going to talk into the enterprise level. I'll save that for another meeting so I can get into this, today's discussion. But just keep in mind that first to deploy, you can actually have the entire program management completely green or that, that dark I don't know what color that is, that darkish bluish thing. So you're not limited to just these that you see that the colors match. You can have first to deploy and program management, technical management, completely the same color and everything has been completed, but, but there's still lines of business one and two that have not even onboarded. Or um, you just some or other, I wish I had an animation, I should do that next time where I just can show you that, you know, policy and procedure, project management, security compliance, it could be all that same dark blue, but bluish color. Technical management, you can have it fully deployed, integration analysis, advanced use cases, you can have um, automation going CI, CD, and that first to deploy, and you still have some other lines of business, don't even know what Delphix is. So just, just an idea, just something for you, take it for what it's worth, but um, this is how I've always deployed. This has grown over the years, I've had people help me um, understand and have added things, I've reduced things, but overall I think this is how I could I would approach an enterprise deployment. Talking about the timeline, 60 day pilot estimate. Again, doesn't have to be Delphix, to be anything, but you're gonna have that technical management. In the timeline, what you see is a, a one year deployment for the enterprise level. Right? If you have a change and you say we're constrained to one year, this is what you're gonna see. I right, um, just shift the months, I guess, around. Your initial deployment to get all those blocks, all that, that baseline deployment, it's not necessarily a 60 day. The 60 day pilot is when can that customer start to return on their investment? Right? That's when you're gonna have that 60 day. That 60 day is when you get the first system in there and then as you work through the other piece, that first virtual database. 
it is going to take some time. Um, you're masking, you're back up in recovery. You know, so you're going to have your initial deployment. You're going to have that theory of operations. It's going to take. Oops, sorry about that. It's going to take a couple. It's going to take a couple months to understand. Three months to understand theory of operations. Make sure they understand what's different, what's changed. Because once it's deployed, then they actually say, "Oh, this is how it works. I see what's going on." The masking again. You're going to have a whole masking job. Three months. Three and a half months, I think you can get a good masking scenario in place, depending on how large that database is, uh, the data center is. And then you have your backup and recovery. Once you get the Delphix engines installed and the virtualizations installed, uh, there's going to be an adoption into that backup and recovery process of the Delphix engine itself. You know, how does this work? How do, how do we ensure that if there's a data center problem or if the system, the VM hosting or the AWS hosting system goes down, how do you ensure that the Delphix and all the work that's been doing on the Delphix from the DevOps team is recoverable? And then, of course, you'll need to identify that and add that to any kind of policy and procedures. Backup and recovery procedure, Delphix engine is what priority? And you know this, they're all going to have their revenue generating systems up first, and then after that, they're going to do priorities based on, on what the situation is. Delphix being it was used properly, it, they're going to want those development database systems up and running as soon as possible. So watch the priority. Ensure that that's injected into a, a good priority uh, for a data center recovery. And understand what their backup policies and procedures are so that you can get that Delphix engine and masking engine in there uh, adequately. Project planning, just like any project planning, you're going to spend the first month or so heads down getting all the requirements together getting all the gap analysis all the uh, impact analysis all those kinds of things done uh, within that initial project planning for the 60-day pilot and then you're also going to get a lot of um, information about how to provide the, the next steps during that it's your turn the project managers and the service team it's your turn to get all the information you need and to help um, either you know figure out where you can expand initially or to at least to understand that things are not missing. Because when you deliver a project like this, you want to show them that you are very much aware of what it's going to take to change their enterprise to use something like this. Something like that touches pretty much every system in a data center, like um, Delphix does. Or again, it could be a CMDB database or, or like Axios, or it could be, you know, just scheduler, you know, control M, any of those things. Changing over to a SaaS service like Salesforce.com. You got to also obviously stop what you're doing and then replace what it is. A lot of work going involved there, but <clears throat> this is your opportunity during that project planning. System resource management, obviously, you know, how are we going to get those systems in there? Especially if there's a purchasing process that has to occur in a time delay. System resources, you see these all the time. Um, companies are locking down their systems, especially if they're moving over to the cloud. Right? They're saying, this is great. I'm glad you guys talked about this, but you know what? We're not buying any more on-prem hardware. It has to all go to the cloud. So you're going to have to kind of revamp what you were thinking. Or other priorities jump in. And you say, well, you know, we, we need these, this storage for a different project, and it's higher priority. So there's always that juggling act. Human resource management, it's not usually a problem to get the teams involved, uh, but it is something you have to plan, and you have to work with each management team. You, know, you have to work with each one of those saying, Okay, well, this is primarily going to hit the DBAs, but we're going to need some network time. We're going to need some storage time. We're going to need some developer time for validation and tests. So um, typical project management there. And then your security and compliance team. They're usually up front. They usually want to scan the software. They want to double check that it meets all, like I said, the password complexity and all the LDAP requirements, all those things. You're going to have some permissions that, with Delphix accessing the database. You're going to have permissions accessing the file system. There's going to be elevated privileges for mounting NFS and iSCSI. Those things usually have to go through approvals from security as well as port exposures. And there's going to be a whole change control process. You want to understand those change controls. Part of your impact analysis. So be very thorough. These are the things you're going to need. What do we need from your organization to make sure they happen? Some of this is fleshed out during the pilot or the POC, POV. Uh, oftentimes we get sitting in front of a POV and they say, oh, what do you mean this port has to be open? We can't do that. So they, they start taking notes, they start learning. 
uh, as they go along. So those are those are things that, that if it's the pre-sales from Delphic side that work the POV or if it's your own team, uh, those should be available to you to understand that, hey, we had this problem before, what can we do to avoid the time delay of getting those ports open or getting those permissions requested. And then your pilot app, your very first one, really it's a, it's a short process start to finish to get that virtualization engine up and running and to get those databases configured. Really, you know, within six weeks, we can show them that, hey, you know, it's installed, it's running. There's not a lot of the other background information that's gone. I mean, we haven't done any policies and procedures back up, all those other things up there in the technical management. But that first pilot's out there, and we've proven ourselves, and the company can then internally think about, wow, okay, how can we make this work? And it gives them a, a breather. It gives them a chance to say, we have it installed. It gives you a chance to say it was successful, all your annotation for moving it out, the, the roadblocks that come across based on um, change control or security controls. And then the first to deploy the second application at this point, you know, what's the next step? But it should be almost much easier than the first one. The engine's installed, everything's working, all the permissions have been opened up. The second one is the second app, and then you, then you get a chance to really say, it's installed, we got the second app running, let's get the word out. Let's, let's hear from the developers, let's hear from the testing team what they think about it. Or let's communicate to the testing team that it's available and let them kick the tires. And once you get that first uh, deploy, you know, other than those, those kind of those back end um, cleanup, what we talked about in that, that first deployment with policies, procedures, those kinds of things, uh, it's pretty much smooth sailing. It's getting the next engine in, getting the next team on board. So here's kind of a, a pilot timeline sample. And again, I have this available for the partner portal. It's in a project format. I think it's OmniPlan or something for Mac. But it can be exported into an Excel sheet. If you guys need some help, if you're working out there, I can help you get this set up. This isn't a must have, right? I mean, what I'm showing you today is just how I've done things. And it's not necessarily how your organization or you do things, but it gives you some ideas, I think, to consider when you build your own project plan. So starting at the top, you know, the virtual data rollout plan. This is per application, right? If a company is organized per application or business unit, and then applications within that business unit. These are things you want to check off. You know, you want to know that there's a requirement. What's the goals and objectives? What was that pre-sales team looking at when, when they were going on? And what did the team agree to? And that takes about a week. And is it a, it's a week. This, this time on the right-hand side, is, it's kind of a, a virtual week. Usually there might be one or two meetings and then some heads down with the project manager but it's just you know, one week time. Give yourself a week to get that completed per application. And it gets faster, just like anything. And determine the technical and operational approach. Those are usually done with like a solution diagram. You know, we already know that these five applications are gonna go and we're gonna have a Delphix engine on-prem and we're gonna map it. You know, just it's a high level, what's the approach, technical approach to getting this installed? And what is the next practices for those technical teams? Of course, you're going to have your validation of the source components. What I mean by validation of the source components is you're going to double check compatibility with the Delphix engine and the systems you're onboarding. So there's going to be some systems, that, oh, you know, we have an Oracle 8 database that we forgot to tell you about. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, Delphix doesn't support that. So we've got to figure out a way to get that source up to a first to a compatible version. And that's, in it. again, just something to consider. And then identif uh, identification of scope components, inventory sheets, who's involved, who, not only the, the components that Delphix is gonna manage, but anything connecting into those components that are gonna need to test it. And they're gonna need to say, hey, well, you can't change my database because I have applications connecting to it. Well, then you gotta reach out, identify those, make sure those individuals who have a stake, those stakeholders that have some, some information or some component necessary to keep the system running, make sure they're involved in your meetings or in communications. Try to identify those up front. And then have a review, the solution design and review. Hold that meeting. Have a, that's a meeting where you actually have someone come in and say, here's the overall solution design. Here are the teams and components we need. 
involved. Here's the timeline we've come up with. Let me have your impact analysis. Here's what I've told you what DELSIX does. Here's what we're going to do with this information. Let me know how that's going to impact you and if there's a gap or a concern that we're going to have regarding that. But it might be a hands raised up. Well, we have a project you can't even start, or we have eight people out on vacation. So just what's the impact, not only from technical standpoint, but from people positioning standpoint as well. And then begin that transition planning. Help, let the teams involved help you. you know, be very concerned with how's this gonna impact you. Even if you know it won't, um, let them talk, let them have their say. They'll be much uh, friendlier throughout the whole process. And then of course your gap analysis. You're gonna need to bring that gap analysis, including costs associated to the management team to let them know this Oracle database needs to be upgraded. So it's gonna be, you know, there's gonna take some time. And then the applications associated, the application team might say, well, the only reason why we haven't upgraded is because X, Y, Z, the application's not compatible. You know, so in order to get the application compatible um, upgrades, because it might be an application that's no longer supported, you know the growth, you've ever done this, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a hard process. And the gap analysis might be do nothing. So that particular database stays out of scope. All those types of things. This is really the planning, which is why I have about four week planning session. And then of course your security and uh, compliance review, another two weeks, um, especially if depending on the size and the organization themselves, it might take two weeks to get everyone in a room to get them to agree, to get them to um, work on any kind of, of approval process that might go through security alone. If there is a um, security hindrance, so maybe they don't want elevated privileges. We do sudo, so if not, you can't use sudo, you need something else. And it might be, you have to go back to Delphix and see what can we do if we can offer sudo privileges, what are the other options? So there's a little bit of work going back and forth. So let's then talk about the actual system architecture per application landscape again. The Delphic system rollout itself, we're assuming right, that you're gonna have the hardware in-house. That's not always true. Sometimes uh, they think they have the CPU and memory available and they don't. And then they go, we're gonna have to get approvals, we're gonna have to find a different team to support us, we're gonna have to go to the cloud, many different things. But in this case, we're assuming the hardware is in-house. And then you're gonna have your Delphix installation and configuration, your source environments, your D-source creations. I'm not, I have that detailed out. So we'll talk about that, those requirements and things later. Target environments and the security and roles access. These should all be identified um, in that project plan initially. What are they? What is that? In the solution design review and the system design review, what are those source environments? Completely identified. D-source creations, what D-sources, how are you going to integrate those creations with the DBA team or the application team if it's a file system? The target environments, you know, the application team, are they involved, are they aware? It really only take two days to get this done, but you need to ensure that, that those two days are mapped out in your project plan. And then if there is a virtual database and self-service build out, right? So you're going to have your create the virtual database. Generally, what I like to do, especially in this initial rollout, is build in time for a practice environment. Build that in. And for every system, you know, make sure you get that practice set up. Like just a database that's, you know, it's not going to impact production, but it's at least a practice environment. And a test and validation of that. That gives everybody a chance to, to see how it works. And then plan it. You know, we're using a non-production Oracle eBusiness Suite just to get this rolled in. Okay, that works. Now let's find a day that we can actually bring the production in, that type of thing. It just helps the, um, the customer realize that you're very much cognizant of their production sensitivities. And then of course, there's gonna be an agile server masking build. And I don't have that pulled out um, just yet because that's gonna be a different discussion probably um, some some time down the line, but it's very similar in process. You're going to you're going to install it. You're going to have the source environments and masking things um, to consider. 
and then the data management process design and implementation per application landscape. So that is once you have it installed, really enforce that this is now a virtual database. And this is how you refresh it. Train that development team, train, train the test team. Uh, this is the new process. And tell them this, the um, features at Delphix. You know? Because a lot of, uh, I've gone back to some of our past customers and they would have a, a new D source for every new virtual database. Like, no, you could have the same D source um, at this database. You can have a D source for, you don't have to have a new D source for every application in words. If it's the same database, use that same database. Show them how to use the technology um, in, to help them make the right decisions for deployment. So for the VM prerequisites, when you're talking to your customer, again, this is available, of course, either online, so you can get all that online. I just kind of summarize it here for any of those partners who've worked with me on any deployments. This is just the way of, of getting that initial prerequisite. It does not mean you shouldn't go back to the documentation and get the detail of how to deploy, but this is something that's good to let your customers know because they need to know some of this, at least for carving out the um, hardware, the system components for the VM itself. You have, um, I'm not going to read them, but you have your virtualization platform. Your virtual CPUs, we recommend eight vCPUs for an engine deployment. Some organizations find they need more, but I would not recommend anything less. Pi uh, you know, the POVs that we have or the, the evaluation copies that we set up before the, the deal is closed, we sometimes will take a smaller amount because we're not testing capacity, we're just testing functionality. Uh, but eight vCPUs per engine. If they can grow, I wouldn't recommend shrinking them. Similar with memory, right? 128 gig of memory is recommended. You can always go higher. 64 gig is minimum. And we do have some training on when that might be a, um, an option. 64 gig memory is an option. But we do have it in our services. We have you know, capacity planning and resource management. And it's in that online training as well as instructor-led. So, um, understand the capacity components when, um, when you're going to your customer. If you don't, go back to it, just listen to it once or twice. Our training, one thing nice about it is once you complete it, you can always go back as a reference material or obviously um, the virtual machine requirements on docs.delphix.com. Storage, 300 gigabytes of free space system disk. Keep that in mind, that's a big, that can be a lot, especially when you have three, four, five engines running. I mean, you're looking at now one point something terabyte. So the free space is used for the Delphix system disk. The Delphix component itself has a little Postgres database running in the background and it's got to update that, keep that in mind. Minimum of four BMDKs, that's for the database storage. Data, you, if those who know Delphix, you know it's a storage engine and you want to be able to have those disks, you know, at least four of them writing back and forth so you're not having any latencies and waiting for an available disk. So you can have six, eight, but four is minimum. We recommend they're all the same size um, and that they're all uniform characteristics. So you kind of use the same storage, whether it's RAID or spindles or tiers, just make sure they're all the same. And that they are at minimum equal to the size of the physical source databases. So if your source ingestion is two terabytes at minimum you want that those uh, data storage disks to be two terabytes at minimum at least to start and then you can grow those as you are but i always recommend equal to the size and that's that's actually a pretty much of a benefit to them companies because that they can you know have all their virtual databases five six seven different virtual databases on that same physical stuff so it's it might be a chunk to take out because again, they're still running their other one. So it's additional storage to begin with until they can start reclaiming the storage used for the physical devices. The SCSI controllers on the uh, VM host, four of them. Our documentation really talks about how to, how to build those out um, with eager zero um, type of, of formats. You know. We have the network latency is important because we, did, we do add that layer of Delphix engine in between the database storage and the system. So definitely take a look. We have network tests, we have storage tests for throughput and for um, IO activities. 
if you haven't had a chance to work those storage tests with a customer, we can offer that in the training that we have. Just let me know, I'll spin up the lab alchemy if you just wanna see how that works. And, but the storage test specifically can only run it before you apply any configuration to the Delphix engines. It's gonna make you do that first. And then, because it is a destructive test on the storage, if you try to run that same test once you have things ingested into the Delphix engine, it'll fail. It won't let you uh, destroy that. In the network, verify the ports. Port exposure may require change control, even the non-prod. Especially when you have multiple organizations, you're gonna have um, maybe one GSI running the network team and the network infrastructure, and you might have a different GSI running the database team. Um, or maybe the company itself has the network infrastructure and there's a DBA team run by system integrator or whichever, but the teams need to talk, the teams need to produce that and so watch that change control for those port exposures. And again, all those ports required is in our docs.delphix.com or in our port partner portal. Things to communicate. They all want to know this. How long is it going to take to install it? It's really fast. I mean, for those who have installed Delphix Engine, and if you have all the necessary components at your fingertips, it's really fast. It takes probably 15 minutes, which is important because sometimes you can install a Delphix Engine, connect everything through CI/CD or through some of that data, data DevOps processes, right? Very quickly, and that's the whole idea about Delphix. You can spin this quick, quick and have databases out there. But installing it for the first time, um, really two hours conversation on a phone call, providing all the change control is done and all those expectations have been delivered to the VMware, the L16, the project manager up front. Again, the network team, they're gonna have to add the DNS. They're gonna have to, sometimes the DNS, they make you wait overnight for that to be updated. Little things like that. So just even though it shows level of effort is two hours, it might be a full day that you have to wait for this to occur. And what I've explained here is for the Linux and the AIX environment, uh, Linux or AIX for Oracle. Keep in mind, Oracle at this point isn't natively supported on Windows, but there are very few of those. But we also have very similar requirements for all of them. But I'm just showing you for this, this purpose, just the Oracle. You know, so you're going to have permissions and change requests. The Linux admin is going to have to create a user on the source and target servers. DBA is going to have to create a user. Um, there are going to be changes, elevated privileges on all cases. So just be aware of those um, changes. Communicate them if you can. And those are coming up next. But level of effort, not long at all. And this is for the first deployment. Remember, I've said this before. Third and fourth and fifth deployments, they all know what's going on. You probably just send an email, hey, we need this set up, and the team will have a, everything all set up ready to go for you. Then ingest the D source. Less than two hours usually to ingest the D source. However, especially if you're, you're touching a production source environment, um, there's going to be the DBAs are going to say, well, you can't have this level zero backup until whatever date because we have this going on, that going on. We have every Sunday on this database is our backups. You can have it first, whatever those that you need to get permission from the DBA of when that's gonna run. But that coordination, those discussions, about two hours, and then the DBA, you can, then you can, within Delphix, you can have it run, set it up to run the very first time at a particular date, and then just come back and say, hey, did it run? Did you get it fully adjusted? And then you move from there. Virtualizing the databases for the first time, less than an hour, you know, usually we run into a little bit of permission issues. You know, this wasn't set up, that wasn't set up. But in reality, that's just getting that first one out. After that, you know, it's the 15 minutes. But just, you know, plan that. DBA, in this case, Oracle DBA and Delphix admins, they're gonna be working back and forth to make sure it's working properly. And then validating the masking setup. Okay, just really connecting to a, an environment and getting all those things set up for really just a couple hours, that's not a big deal. But it might be in involving, again, the, the user that needs to be created. There might be multiple schemas that need to be set up. So as you, as you work through this, just kind of keep that on. But this is a really good initial setup for a you know, one system going out. You can say this is about the LOE that we're gonna need, as opposed to a timeline, which might be a week or, or two weeks out, only because these people have other jobs. And there, there are change controls and there are vacations that get in the middle of it.
So moving on then, new operational roles associated to Delphix. Communicate this out. Delphix dynamic data platforms new. So you're gonna have a system admin, a console admin, you can have object owners. Those all need to be defined and understood and placed in policies eventually, but at least defined uh, as you go to it. Sometimes it'll be a temporary. Sometimes it'll be, well, the DBAs have it now, and then once it's operational, we hand, we hand it over to Network Operations Center. That's fine. But just keep in mind that these are gonna be new to an organization, at least initially. Um, central management console, if we have, if, if we have that going. Um, and the masking admin might be the same people, but just communicate. These are these are new for the customer to consider. There's the port usage. These ports available, I know, um, partner portal. But these are the things you want to hand off to the network team. A lot of this is already going to be open. If they're using Oracle, it's probably already running 1521 or 23. SSH is probably already opened. Some of those ports are open, you know. Um, SQL Server ports. If, if you're running, it's probably open, but you just want to communicate it because be surprised it might not be as well. Then the operational procedures. I mean, as you're defining this, as you're installing, ask these questions. You know, are we building a repeatable procedure to build these out? Are we or are we not? And should we consider that? And if not, maybe take notes on your own because if they do expand, and they select you to provide those services. Again, you've got this, you know, last time I spoke with, with this individual and this is what worked, this is what they build them, build that procedure for yourself, have a sample doc document for them. So that, you know, just, hey, we can, you know, accelerate this whole process for you. Like all you have to do is fill in these unknowns that are specific to your organization. Develop capacity planning methods. We know that Delphix Engine on the virtualization for sure is going to have the ability to alert when you're 80 percent full on storage you know have those who do they go to how do we plan for year over year storage growth those types of things and define your uh, access control methods write them out in that documentation the system design document write them out so that the, you have a deliverable that shows all this information to those people um, Trust me, if you have a, a good set of deliverables, they're gonna call you back the next time for the next, even not necessarily Delphix, they'll, they'll call you back for, oh, they were really good, they were very thorough. Let's get them back for this next one. Uh, publish your service level agreements. Find out what is acceptable performance, what isn't. What is general availability? Again, this is gonna build into your backup and recovery of the Delphix engine. You know, how soon, how often does this have to be up? What's, what are the requirements to make sure this is up? Where do we fit in that? PR um, system um, process. The virtualization operation, right? This is as opposed to system operations. The virtualization best practices, Delphix has tons of those. You know, user maintenance, you know, if the user leaves, if it's LDAP and they integrate, that's fine, it's gonna drop off, but what happens when a hard-coded user actually leaves? Object maintenance, the Delphix object maintenance, you know, have a process in place that you scan the usage of these virtual databases and, you know, have a way to communicate they need to be dropped, they're not used anymore. Uh, these data pods, the bookmarks, those types of things. Separation of duties, define the ownership roles within the data application that can be part of that policy and procedure for the customer. And then, of course, your on-call support um, for the Delphix engine, you know, that it's going to be included with somebody's on-call support. Keep a record of vendor support accounts for them. Let them know what their, their support account is and that deliverable, hand it to them. You know, um, here's your, here is the Delphix support desk. Here's who you need to call. This is what you need to, here's how you have to contact. You, you know, include the pre-sales in the beginning. You know, if you can't get a hold of anybody, call your pre-sales guy um, or whoever can help you. The customer success team, they probably introduce themselves if they're part of the account, the Delphix team. At least get that out there to them. Any kind of CMDB reporting mechanism, some of them are very uh, advanced CMDBs where they push a button and it shows you if we take this system down, it impacts all these eight other systems. Some of them are Excel sheets. But um, make sure they know where Delphix fits in that flow because if there's virtual databases down, Delphix could be the cause, it might not, it could be a network, but it could be the Delphix engine. So make sure you, you know that part is involved in there. And then re replication best practices. If you're deploying a replication engine, 
even for DR, you know, get that defined. So these are operational procedures that you want to at least get started for them. Um, hand off to them as a deliverable. Trust me, they'll be your friend for life. They'll come back to you every time. Masking, very similar best, best practices, admin procedures for the user maintenance and object naming conventions. Um, algorithm definition and maintenance. When to use custom, when to use vendor supplied, all those types of things. Operational policies and procedures where you get these built out um, and log archiving and cleanup. Very important, even within the Delphi, it's very important. Find out, uh, I've been in operations and I've gotten, you know, system halts because my archive logs, my, my archive logs from the databases and just as well as file systems filling up with other log type files. So figure out how you get those cleaned up. Uh, develop masking control best practices, auditing and reporting requirements, and then on-call support as well for masking, you know, threshold for job failures, you know, if jobs running too long, you know, get the communication out through the call, through the contact, and again, su Delphic support as well, make sure that's available. Oh, I okay. did that in there twice, sorry about that. Here's some key project deliverables. Um, uh, again, take a look at this. This is, you know, I have examples of many of these. You might have your own examples, um, project startup, those types of things. Um, they don't have to be fancy, but something, at least for yourself, but something to deliver to the customer, and they're very happy. System conversion planning, let them know who, who's going to be involved in the, that initial system and what their roles are going to be. Budget definition, they usually, at the first deployment, they've already got that defined because they know. Um, and all these different rollout plans. Traceability, make sure you're requiring those. I'm not gonna go through each one of these, but a lot of these, I'd say 90% of these, I have samples that I've used throughout my career uh, that are focused on Delphix specific. Discuss the program purpose, right? As you go in for um, a new, like a growth, you know, find it. Once it's deployed, go in for a, you know, a reconciliation. You know, after the six, six weeks or you get the first one out, try to have a discussion with the executive team to indicate, you know, you know, here's what we've got. Here's what completed. Here's where we go next. You know, how do we get there? Help us. And, and how do we improve and grow together as a company, as a, as a team, so to speak. But find out those from them. Um, don't ever leave a, a deployment without having a a good meeting with those, the team, you know, thank you team for all the folks that you work with, as well as, um, you know, next steps. Can we talk to your, your other lines of business? Can you be a, a champion for us to go on next? Because with Delphix, for us, it means obviously selling more software and for your services team, it's getting your services out there and getting relationships that go deeper than Delphix and to other organizations. And while you're doing the Dallas deployment, obviously you you should be looking for other potential opportunities um, that your company might be able to provide. Maybe you realize that you know your storage is getting pretty tight, and you know, how much do you spend for your storage? You know, we have a, a new there's new technology, there's tier storage, there's whatever the next technology is, and we can have these people talk to you. Um, but that is all I had for today. Um, uh, I know I've been doing a lot of talking, but again, if you have questions. Uh, you can ask me now. Um, I think I have a couple person with their hand raised. Dustin, you have yeah. your hand raised. Yep. Thank you for the uh, the info. I'm curious what where the roadmap is relative to deploying Delphix as a container instead of uh, as a virtual machine. So when we get into the the containers, we're talking more at the the first level as part of the discussions, right? Let me see if I can get back to my slide deck. Let me um, get it all the way back. I should have this one at the very last, but I don't. I should have it repeated. Okay, there it goes. So on this slide, during your theory of operations, that initial deployment, those, those requirements that you're gathering, at this point, you're finding out how far are you gonna go with that deployment. In terms of the project plan itself, it's in there, um, you would add a line item. So if you determine, yeah, we're gonna go with data pods, we're gonna initially uh, send this out, for data ops integration, so you're gonna actually, this data ops integration is gonna turn that darker blue color because you're gonna integrate completely with a, a full data flow, in which case during that planning, 
you're going to add this here um, into your virtual database and self-service build up. There would be a self-service 2.1.2.4, which would say build data pods. So, you know, again, it, it all depends on how far that first deployment is going to go in this technical management component side. Right. So, so there's nothing, if I understand you though, then there's nothing that would stop us from deploying Delphix as a container. Well, I'll, so for, for, oh, I see what you mean by container, like in a, um, I'm sorry, I was thinking of the, the data containers within Delphix. Are you thinking something more along the line of like a Docker container? Yeah. So like you, if you go forward a couple of slides, you've got all your VMware requirements for the deployment. Right. Yeah. What if we want to do all this, but do it as containers. So it's fully, you know, it's fully immutable. Right, and that's gonna happen with the, the API, REST API controls with it that Delphix exposes, right? Okay. In that case, it's a little more of a, more of a, um, it's still the data ops integration piece and it's still gonna be part of that discovery, but it can certainly be integrated with a container and that's gonna be part of your requirements um, and goals and objectives. If your goals and objective is to include in Docker containers or a container rollout or automation rollout, that is where that's all going to be defined, and then it's going to be part of that initial rollout, and you would add that to your project plan. Great. But it, certainly we expose all those, and, it, and you can use the Delphix container as part of that. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So any other questions? Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and end. Uh, I'm going to post this when the, when the recording comes in on the partner portal, I'll, the slide deck will be there. And don't forget, there's a lot of information on data ops and DevOps integrations on that partner portal. Um, we can always have for our partners, we always offer um, some additional training if you want a workshop um, on how to actually integrate. We can get our the COE for DevOps to help you integrate with GitHubs and, and Jenkins and Dockers and things like that. So um, reach out to me, reach out to um, your sales, your manager reps, and we can get you the right training. Okay, thanks everybody. Thanks, Janine. Thanks, Janine. Yep, yep. Thank thanks. you. Bye, Bye now.